welcome biologists. To this session we're going to look at the different types of circulatory systems. So to start off with we'll have a look at mammals and birds. So as you can see here I have a double circulatory system and what this means is I have a pulmonary circulation which takes the blood to the lungs and back and I also have a systemic circulation which takes the blood to the body and back again. Now there's a massive benefit for having this double circulatory system and that is that I can have blood going at a lower pressure to the lungs because if the blood um, went to the lungs under a high pressure it would actually damage the tissues in the lungs but in this system here in the systemic circulation I need the blood to be under a high pressure in order to go to the far extremities of the body so it's a massive advantage to the organism to have that double circulatory system where the blood passes through the heart twice in one cycle so that the blood can be under a higher pressure to go around the whole of the body it also increases the speed of circulation in the body too. So a closed circulatory system is where the blood will stay within vessels in the organism. So in this particular case, arteries, veins, capillaries, venules and arterioles. In a fish, it's a lot more simpler. So they have a single circulatory system. So as you can see there in the heart, it's a simple heart. It only has one atrium and one ventricle. Whereas in us, we have two atria and two ventricles. Uh, as you can see, it's very simple. The blood passes through the heart once on one cycle, but this does mean that the blood cannot go under a high pressure, otherwise it will damage those gills and the capillaries within the gills. So, yeah, it's very simple. You just can't, the blood can't go into that high pressure and it goes around a bit slower than it would do in a double circulatory system. It would also limit the size the organism can grow to. Because if it has a double circulatory system, it means that blood can go under higher pressure, it can go to all the extremities. It means that all of the cells in the, in the body are going to be able to get um, oxygen and glucose for aerobic respiration a lot quicker. Whereas in a single circulatory system, they're not going to be able to get those nutrients needed as quickly. So that's why it puts a limit really on the size that organism can grow to if it has a single circulatory system. So, um, open circulatory system, this is where the blood is not in vessels. Um, so this occurs within insects. Um, and so this is where the um, fluid circulates around the, the body. Um, and the way that this body, the, this fluid moves around is during movement of that insect. So when that insect is jumping, hopping, walking, whatever it might be doing, that helps to circulate this hemolymph um, which is the, the blood, if you like, inside this insect. Um, don't really need to know a lot about this. I've very rarely seen an exam question on this, uh, but we just need to know it's an open system. The blood is not carried within vessels here within an insect, and all of the cells are in within direct contact of the blood. Closed circulatory system, as we mentioned, the blood is contained within blood vessels. Um, in the, the tissue fluid is a substance that leaves the blood to bathe the cells to get the nutrients that they need and to take away any waste products that the cells would need. Um, okay, so that's everything we need to know on the circulatory systems. Um, I have an exam question for you here. You want to pause it and have a go. And the mark scheme is coming up in a second. So we'll underline and highlight those keywords we need. And here is the mark scheme. Guys, good luck with your exams and all the best.